Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is part five, or in German, fünf, <laughs> or cinco. Uh, I don't know, why am I going through languages and saying the number five? I've got Patrick with me today. Hello again. The one and only Patrick. <laughs> uh, and you'll be happy to know, Patrick, that there are no cat sounds on this road trip. And that's mainly because I'm driving in my 1985 GMC truck. Um, the fuel leak is repaired, and we can actually get to do some hard <laughs> labor today. We have to start hauling truckloads and truckloads of stuff to charity and really start clearing that house out. Um, we want to focus on the main floor today, getting that cleaned up as much as possible before we focus on the downstairs and eventually the garage garages. Uh, but there was one bonus from last time I was at the house. When Melissa and I were searching through the room, we found boxes, cases full of uh, sealed and like new cassettes. So look, my truck happened to have an old style cassette holder because it has the original cassette deck and it works. Yay. So as Jim Gaffigan would say, we can listen to Billy Joel. Uh, I got Neil Young, Aerosmith. I got some road tunes for us. Sounds good. Some classics. Okay, let's hit the road. Well, the field find truck made it and boy, does it look good. All shined up. I'm even starting to dig that uh, camper on the back, or not the camper, the cap on the back. And we got Patrick here. So uh, since you, you were here last, uh, Melissa and I and the kids did a bunch of work, but we just got news that the dumpster people did not bring our dumpster yet. Uh, so we'll get inside and then I guess what we'll do is we'll start uh, getting the truck loaded up with all the stuff for charity. First order of business this morning is gonna be to load up bunch of stuff for charity. We've got this big pile here, which we'll start to haul out. And then there's another pile in the other room, which is all closed right there. That stuff will all go too, and it'll give us a bit more space to work. While we're here, I'd like to get the upstairs cleaned up as much as possible. Okay, looks like we have a load that's ready to go to charity. We'll get her closed up and hit the road. We'll see how much they can take before they tell us to go away. Patrick was joking. He said, oh no, they've got a truck this time. <laughs> it's true. All right, you ready, Pat? Already. Already? Okay, let's hit the road. Well, with that load taken to charity, I can actually see the corner of this room. And all of that stuff so far has been identified for the most part, almost all of it has been identified as stuff that is sellable for auction. In this room, remember how full it was right up to the ceiling? It can almost see the carpet in here. And I'm gonna continue working my way around trying to get most of this cleaned up, but some of these boxes do need to be sorted through because they're cassettes and DVDs and records and things that uh, might have some value. Uh, Patrick. Oh. Ooh, that's right in your face. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start sifting out of this room and sorting into boxes that can go to charity. And then if you don't mind, uh, we'll just run stuff straight out to the uh, the truck that's charity-wise. But last time I was in here, a lot of this, the things in here were actually quite sellable, um, which presented a problem. Um, because I was like, yeah, sure, we could give stuff to, to charity, but a lot of this stuff is, you know like a ship and, and just neat things. So I guess uh, I'll have to be not as discerning today as I think about lightening the, the load, but you know, like boxes of yarn and stuff, there's always somebody looking for that. Okay, let me start sifting the first box. This is a lot of linens. That's the thing, is it just all cloth? I think this box, Aside from the yarn that's in there, it's just fabric. So that one can go. National Enquirer, what was making news? 
Tony Danza's jealous wife locks him out of the house. Wasn't he, uh, was it the boss? Who's the boss? Who's the boss? I guess it wasn't Tony Danza. <laughs> and Oprah, poor Oprah. She's been having herself uh, and her diet secrets uh, advertised in papers since 1990. Oh, the old tabloids. Eddie Murphy. Why drive women wild? Why do you drive women wild? Maybe he does the clump impersonation and it's not the kind of wild that you want. They're like, mm, that's enough. Okay. Start filling boxes. Start getting stuff out to the truck because there's only so many hours in a day and I can't sit here and go through all this stuff and uh, not find at least a couple treasures, hopefully. Anyway, we'll see. This looks like just a lot of assorted... Uh, household wares it was marked knickknacks and that always makes me wonder because uh somebody's knickknacks could be kind of cool in this case i think the knickknacks is like aluminum foil and stuff but anyway it's worth checking anyhow going through some of these boxes and i'm separating them to keep uh donate and well, this is the one I'm going through. And I'm unwrapping everything, which is a pain in the butt. Um, but it's worthwhile because there's some cute little cup sets in here. And I know that that would sell, especially if the whole set's there. Uh, found some Fire King uh, in here. And um, I mean, who knows what somebody had packed away. You know, it's, it doesn't all make sense. I think it's just everything out of a China cabinet or what have you. So, Steelite International England. So these little uh, sort of kitchen accessories might make interesting boxes and stuff just to sell at auction. So I'll probably put that in my in this whole box in my keep pile. And there's been an awful lot of china, an awful lot of fine china that uh, I'll have to sort through and make sure the sets are there too. But still a whole pile of boxes in this room to go through. Dolly mixture. What is this? Oh, it's not dollies. It's like the old tabletop of grapes and fruit and stuff that your grandma would have had. And then when you were hungry and you went to grab one, it would break your tooth. <laughs> Don't actually eat those grapes. Those aren't real. Okay. I wonder if people are actually decorating with those things now. I'll set them aside to kind of look them up because inevitably I get stuff like that and I don't think it's anything. And then somebody's like, no, no, that's totally good. Oh, these are antique Christmas ornaments. Those are good. Revolving Christmas tree light. There's some good old ornaments in here. Some nice antique Christmas ornaments. I wonder if that's what that is in that box too. I found a Paddington bear, with his little raincoat. And I'm slowly making my way to this other wall, but there's an awful lot of, uh, I think the moisture got in here through that window. One of the boxes was a little not it wasn't currently wet but it had been wet unfortunately a bunch of old stuffed animals had to get thrown out because they were moldy these boxes don't look like they've had water on them but that is a box of assorted antique and vintage christmas ornaments well, that'll go up for auction now there's a jacket this is handmade somebody's made this like a patchwork quilt kind of out of old jeans and uh, it's got the U.S. and Canada, and I guess it's like a celebration of the, you know, the two countries. Kind of cool. It looks like that's not the only one in there, too. Some other sort of things. This is all, it looks like custom-made sort of clothing. I'm hoping to find some more fancy Western wear in here somewhere. Well, this box has a nice little antique key-wound clock and a book. The psychic power of animals. Ooh, that cat does look like it's up to no good. <laughs> they wrote a whole book on that? Pets can be more than companions. The animals we share our lives with can be channels to another world. Documentation now exists. It proves animals do indeed possess a sixth sense. Mysterious powers revealed. Huh. Okay. Well, that's just a weird enough book. I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably bring that back with me to do something with. Another successful load. This one is mainly clothing. 
every time I turned a corner in that little room, there was boxes and boxes of clothes. And sadly, none of them were collectible. Um, but they are usable, so off they go. As I've been sifting through, I've been finding tons, and I mean tons, of cups and saucers. Like, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of teacups and saucers. More than I would ever have had at my antique shop when I had that going. Like, look at them all. Those are all cups and saucers in there. Those are all cups and saucers. Those are cups and saucers. Oh, man. Must have been one big tea party they're waiting for. Here's an old set. The patio snack set from the Federal Glass Company. Look, it's all there. You got your plates with your little spot for your cup to rest. So you can have your uh, cucumber sandwich and your tea or whatever you're drinking in 1957 or whenever this set's from. But very cool pattern, excellent condition. Still in the original box too. We are back from doing another run to charity. And as you can see, the one, oh, I guess you can't really see. That closet was full of clothes. Now I'm starting to put keeper stuff in it, like this oil lantern. Um, there's lots of nice cups and saucers. And I've got more boxes to go through. I didn't realize this closet went all the way down. So uh, it continues. But let's look through this box. It looks kind of interesting. Okay. Stuffed animals. This is a uh, antique car horn, like a really early car horn. The mounts on the side. <laughs> I don't know if it's got a name on it somewhere, but that's super cool. And it looks like they've got a second one. Oh, that's like a little bugle. <laughs> don't recommend that. A shoehorn with a back scratcher. Some beanie babies. Some of those can actually be fairly collectible. That's an old, uh, what was a battery operated toy. Not much left of it now missing the guts this box was marked uh stuff to keep and i'm unwrapping some things i already found something real cool look at this it's a popeye dime register bank probably from the 1940s and it's full of dimes and if it's if the dimes are as old as the uh, piggy bank itself they might be silver dimes i'm gonna stick that aside see what else is wrapped up if anybody who has a house full of this much stuff mind you everything was marked was Kind of for teeth, but maybe there's a few more precious things in here that uh, that they didn't want to get rid of. What is that? Little silver urn of some kind, silver plate, I should say. Oh my goodness! There's so many little tiny things, all um, all packed up. That's a little salt and pepper. It's probably the, the matching one's probably in here somewhere. Hair elastics. Fake roses. They're like plastic. It looks like they lit up at one time. But I can't take too long sorting. That's neat. Dominion Bank, piggy bank. Where is a keeper box? Here, I'll make this into a keeper box. See, I've got my sort box, my donate box, my keeper box, and a garbage bag all at the ready. Because there's a combination of everything. A little old clock. Mm. Not worth a whole lot, that little clock, but I might be able to put an assortment of clocks together. Car coasters, I can donate those. These um, boxes, oh, that's for, I think, your tea towel. Just a little note clip. It's kind of cool, though. Put that in the keep pile. That's a little uh, desk alarm clock, travel clock. Come with us. Some of this paper can go in the garbage. I'm gonna keep on sorting. That one's donate, yeah. Unless I missed something in there, but 
Snoopy gift bags. What's this? Talking Mrs. Beasley. And it's brand new in the plastic still? Whoa, that's from Family Affair, yeah, 1967. Absolutely pristine, still in the plastic, Mrs. Beasley. That's gonna be worth a couple bucks. That's probably like a $200 toy right there. In that kind of condition, maybe better. And there's another big toy in there too. What do we have? It is a pedal pretty. Still in the box. I pedal my trike, I push my wagon, and you pull me along by the string. Cool. A couple vintage toys. I was not expecting to find a talking Mrs. Beasley brand new in the box. That's neat. Cigar boxes filled with stuff. Let's see. It's an old box of pencils. Look at that. Dixon's Eldorado pencils. Kind of neat. What's this? It's an old, old, from the Golden Nugget, Las Vegas. I found all those pictures that were from the Golden Nugget. Oh, let's see if I can focus on that. That's got to be like a 1930s Golden Nugget advertising pencil. It's good to look through these boxes because you find these little gems like this. It's finally lunchtime. We've been dropping stuff off. We actually uh, drove into a whole other different town to uh, do a charity drop because the one in the town we were in said uh, that's about all we can handle right now. Uh, we're stopping at a, it's probably never a good sign when you go for lunch and it's a buffet in a back alley. <laughs> yeah. But that's where we're going. Um, Patrick says, what? how many stars is it rated? Four. And I said out, out of how many <laughs> stars and apparently it's out of five stars. So. Attached to a gas station. Yeah. And hey, like <laughs> I said, luckily we have a bathroom that works in this place. So if, uh, <laughs> if we end up with dysentery, then I guess we'll survive. So it's lunchtime and then back to the house. Well, we finally sat down to eat after a long morning and I see you got the chicken balls. Mm -hmm. Must've been a male chicken. <laughs> Let's see what my fortune cookie says. Okay. Fortune cookie time. Oh, I got two fortunes. Let's see, the first one says, a cheerful letter or message is on the way to you. Mm, does that mean that that's the second fortune? Okay, here's my here's my other cheerful letter. Prepare to die. No, oh, prepare today for the demands of tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing with this house right now. Hmm, a fortune to tell me about. I had another fortune coming, and then one to tell me that I have work ahead of me. No kidding. So far today, we have done two truckloads of stuff to charity. I'm gonna start going through the garage now because I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here that can go to charity. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff in general. It needs to be dealt with. Um, we found a, uh, a charity that will actually accept donations up until 9 p.m. tonight. So we're gonna try and do a few runs today and make this as productive as possible. The more that can go, the better. Oh, it's definitely looking strange. There's actually, uh, you can walk a little bit. It's still really full. We're what, like halfway full on another load right now? Well, at least two thirds. I found a box of magazines and I think they'll just go for recycling, but seems innocent enough. But if I, if I signed up for that and had that delivered to the door, I'm sure Melissa would have a few questions when she saw I had a subscription to the Beaver magazine. Look, it's innocent. It's exploring Canada's history. It can go now though. Definitely don't need that. There are, actually Patrick, I'm gonna hand this to you. Thank you. Oh. It's a carpeted garage. At least this part is. Weird. Don't often think about putting a carpet in my garage. It's pretty deluxe though. A lot of this stuff that's in here is just sort of generic yard sale stuff. Um, and really not a lot of it is are things that uh, I would attempt to sell at auction. It's not really super collectible. Useful, yes, to somebody but uh, not overly collectible. So a lot of this stuff is just gonna end up uh, going to the thrift shops. Those are glad resealable containers. There was one of old Tupperware, which I will probably try and sell. People love their old Tupperware, but something like that, the newer stuff, I can just go to charity. Novelty alcohol bottle. It's called Yukon Hooch. <laughs> 
it'd be a terrible username if you have an online dating profile. My name, you can find me on my profile, my Tinder profile. I'm there under Yukon Hooch. <laughs> and somebody went uh, absolutely crazy at the mini bar. Some serious uh, hotel bills with this stuff. There's all kinds of, and those are still sealed and full, little bottles of alcohol. Uh, there's an old Tupperware there. Save that for my Tupperware bin. The rest of this stuff can go. Thank goodness the dumpster arrived. Patrick, I, I can see a baseball hat moving over there. Can it be? It's Patrick. Um, sorry about this pile. I mean, the kids made it the other day. Uh, if you get to a big piece like the cabinet or anything, just give me a shout. I'm going to work in the garage making more garbage and more donate stuff. I guess I'll leave you back here for a bit. Yeah, I have my work cut out for me. Yeah, a little bit. I think the work being cut out for uh, both of us is true. One of the problems in these sort of situations is that there's only me, um, just as there's only Patrick, but I'm the only one who can sort. I know what's gonna be garbage, what's gonna be donate, and there's not another person that can take my place. So even if I had 20 or 30 helpers, um, you know, unless they were all other antique dealers or something, there wouldn't be, uh, um, it wouldn't go much faster. Because I know a lot of people at home are saying, well, why don't you have a crew of like 10 or 15 people? Well, the sorting process is something I got to do kind of on my own. Once we have piles set aside, then it goes a lot faster. But Pat and I are making good progress here. And um, I'm going to keep working my way around and just make sure that anything that can go, can go. Kind of loading up this box of jackets to donate. And they're all kind of generic, except, well, I mean, they're leather, kind of 80s. Check this hippie jacket out. It's got tassels on it. Apparently, the original idea of these tassels was to help uh, dry the jacket that would pull the water out of it if you got caught in rain. That's what I heard. You can correct me if I'm wrong, which I sometimes am. Uh, but that is kind of a cool retro looking thing that a young gal, even nowadays, even possibly my daughter, might wear because the whole hippie thing is back in fashion. So I'll set that aside to show her or uh, perhaps Steven's girlfriend, Hannah, and see if she might be interested in that. I am making some progress in the garage. I have tunneled my way all the way to the back. I have taken uh, probably 15 or 20 boxes out to the dump. I have got another 15 or so in the back of the truck and I'm still loading. We're trying to get one more load done before the end of the day that we can haul off to charity um, so that uh, at least we'll have less to do tomorrow. So I'm gonna get back at it, back at the sorting. And uh, some of the stuff I've been through, actually, where's the light? I can actually see this little freezer here now. But it's so brave. Oh, where's the light switch? I feel like it was around here somewhere. That's the problem. I can't see anything. Oh, there we go. And there was light. There's a door. Bypass. Bypass bathroom door. It's like a pocket door. Okay, old shoes. Some of these boxes look like they're empty. But one marked old shoes might be right for going to uh, charity. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's all full of, uh, it's old shoes in the boxes. Hang on, that might be a little bit more cool than I thought. Yeah, these are kind of like uh, 1950 shoes. Look at that. Still brand new in the box. Are these all vintage shoes? Those almost look like Doc Martens. But yeah, they're all old antique shoes. Still in their original boxes. Well, I guess I can't... Uh, that's so cool in terms of vintage footwear that it's all brand new stuff. That uh, this will likely, even though some of it's kids stuff, this will likely all go off to auction. Because vintage clothes are pretty cool. Uh, but what else can go? I guess this blanket can get out of here. There's some tins. I should start sorting those and pull out the ones that are more interesting, like the tobacco tins from just your generic sort of Bassett candy tins, the newer ones. I'll separate out the ones that I think have value, like that one, but not that one. Those sort of uh, tins that are made to be collectible never really are. I mean, some people probably buy them to decorate with, but collectors aren't buying them too much. Found this bag there. I thought it was kind of a funny shape, and it looked inside. Look, there's fishing rods. 
There's uh, two complete fishing rods, maybe a third in there. Yeah, there's three of them. So three good fishing rods. That's a good find. And this box was full of old calendars from the 60s and 70s. International Harvester, Golf Gasoline, um, all kinds of neat stuff. And, you know, people do buy ephemera, like I was saying, stuff like that. So that stuff will probably sell. This one's marked Mums. Oh, is it more teacups? Oh my gosh, if it's, a, if it's another plate, if it's another set of dishes, I think it is, yep. It's another set of dishes. I don't know how many china cabinets these folks must have had, but they must have had a few because there have been numerous upon numerous. Oh, I almost got hit by a cane. That'd be awkward if I got injured by that and then had to use it. This box was marked Christmas, which at the end of the day could really mean anything. There are bags full of stuff. And what do we have? A little snowman. Not terribly old, but look, there's one of those old ceramic Christmas trees and that is worth reselling because there are people who would like that. Look at this old wrapping paper too. And there's the base for the Christmas tree. I imagine the tops in there too. The ceramic Christmas tree is actually a good collectible thing. So, um, that could sell for upwards. You'd be surprised hundred and a half, maybe, maybe better. Looks to be in good shape. That was a good score. I should put it somewhere that's not teetering over top of a ledge. This box isn't just tins. Look, it's lunch kits. We've got gun smoke. Uh, this looks like a baseball thing. Yep. A baseball thing, not in the greatest shape. Actually, it's in terrible shape. <laughs> There's a couple others in here, though, too. That one's space themed. That in good condition is actually worth a little bit of money. It might clean up better than it is right now. So some interesting tins in this box. We have pulled so many uh, collector tins out so far. I've been piling them up. The generic ones we're donating, that's fine. But uh, any that are a little bit more interesting, I've been setting aside. And right when I think I'm getting through the tins, it turns out this giant fireplace box is full of tins. Let's have a look. I should probably move those. Military tins, that might be good too. Military tins and skates, all right. Let's see what we got going on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is all old stuff. This is Senator Tobacco, old tea tins, we got old chum. This whole thing is completely packed full of antique collector tins of all sorts jackpot these can range anywhere from you know uh a tin like that might be 20 20 bucks or so that's not that old one but the older one would be uh but some of those yeah 20 25 dollars each and then you times that by a giant box full of tins we should be able to see a good chunk of money come back just on those tins so guys, that's all for us today. A lot of clearing, a lot of exploration, and what, how many loads will this be now that we've taken to charity? It's like our fifth or sixth? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Five or six loads, I mean full, up to the roof of that uh, canopy, loads of stuff to charity. We got one more drop to do for the day, and then we're gonna call it a night. So guys, thank you very much for watching today's episode. We'll see you all soon, and bye for now. Bye guys.